Hey there, it's John with Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to create conditional formatting for partial matches on a list of values. So this is a great question submitted by Eugene, a member of our Elevate Excel training program, and he has a list of part numbers here where he wants to apply conditional formatting to highlight these cells in yellow, where we have a match to a list of values. And these are the values that the, the part number has to begin with. So as you can see here, wherever this uh, a part number begins with this text string right here, we want to highlight that yellow. And that's for multiple values in this list over here. So in this video, I'm going to explain how to set this up. At the end of the video, I'm also going to explain how to uh, apply the conditional formatting to entire rows. So this is the same setup here with the same rules and the same conditions. But as you can see here, the conditional formatting is now highlighting the entire row. So we'll take a look at that at the end of the video. But let's first take a look at how to set up the basics here. I'll make this file available for free download. I'll put a link to that in the description below this video so you can download it and follow along. So for this conditional formatting rule, we're going to use a formula. And in order to do that, we'll uh, go to the Home tab here and go to conditional formatting and then we're going to choose new rule and that'll bring up this new formatting rule window and here we're going to choose use a formula to determine which cells to format and as you can see down here it says that it will format values where this formula is true so the formula needs to return a true or false value in order to apply the conditional formatting so this is where we can write our formula However, I like to write the formula in a cell first and then copy and paste it into here. It makes it, it's just easier to write the formula, validate it and make sure it's working. So we'll go ahead and do that first. And we're going to just put our formula right here in cell B3. It doesn't matter where you put it, but it, it should be in an adjacent cell in the same row uh, so we can evaluate and copy it down. And the formula or the function we're going to use is count if. Now there's a lot of different ways to do this, a lot of different lookup formulas you can use. I like to use count if for this. So we'll go ahead and use count if. Uh, so we'll type count if, tab into that. Count if just has two arguments. The first is the range that we want to look in. And in that case, that's this list of values here. So we'll select F3 to F5. Now I'm going to hit F4 on the keyboard to make this an absolute reference. And uh, that'll be our range. Now we're going to uh, type a comma. Oh, I should just mention I'm making that an absolute reference because as we copy the formula down here, this column, we want to make sure that this reference stays the same on that range. That's an absolute reference with those dollar symbols. Okay, the criteria, for the criteria, we want to just get the first five characters from our part number. And that's because each of these text strings just contains five characters. In order to do that, we can use the left function. So I'm going to type left here, tab into that. Left will just return the first number of characters, however many we specify, from a value uh, or from a text string. So that text string is going to be the value in cell A3. So we can create a reference to A3. Here we can type a comma, and then we'll type a five for the first five characters. Close the parentheses there. So that'll evaluate, return the first five characters from A3, and that'll be our criteria for the count if. It'll look in this range over here. We need to close the parentheses again on count if, and we'll go ahead and hit enter. And as we can see, that returns a one. And that's because the first five characters of this part number are found in this list. It's this first one right here. Now we can copy this down. We'll go ahead and copy the formula all the way down. And now we can see we get a list of ones and zeros. And this means anytime we have a one, this means count if has found the first five characters in our list of values over here. So that means it's uh, returning a true. Uh, now the conditional formatting manager wants us to create a formula that returns a true or false, but we can also just create a formula that returns ones and zeros or any number other than zero uh, will be a true and zero will be a false. So that's fine as well. We don't necessarily have to return a true or false. So now that we have our formula here, we can take this, I'm just going to copy the formula text, hit control C to copy that, and we'll go create our conditional formatting rule. So again, home tab of the ribbon, conditional formatting dropdown, we'll choose new rule, uh, use a formula, and right here we're going to paste our uh, conditional formatting rule. Now, like I said before, you can write the formula here. You do not need to write it back in Excel. If you know count if really well, 
you, and the left function, you can definitely write it here. One little nuance or, or caveat here that you should be aware of is that if you write the formula in the conditional formatting rule uh, window here, when you select A3, when you select the reference here, it's going to make it an absolute reference. And we don't want that. We want this to be a relative reference, at least for the row number, because the conditional formatting manager is going to copy or apply this formula down to all of the cells we have selected or that the, for, the rule applies to. So I'm going to hit F4 again. You can keep the uh, column letter as absolute. And that actually works well for when we apply this to entire rows, which I'll talk about later. But make sure the row number is a relative reference. There's no dollar symbol in front of it. Now we'll apply the formatting. Click the Format button. And of course, with conditional formatting, you could do fill colors, font colors, number formats. We'll just choose fill color here, choose this yellow color, hit OK, and then we'll hit OK again. And as you can see now, that's applied the conditional formatting, but it applied it to this cell here, which isn't what we want. And that's because I forgot a step. And I purposely did that because I often forget this step and you probably will too. And that step is to first, before we create the conditional formatting rule, is to first select all the cells we want to apply it to. Now, if you forget to do that, like I just did, it's okay, we can still fix it. So we'll again, go home tab, conditional formatting, and then we'll go to manage rules. And from here, you might need to change this to this worksheet to see the rule listed here, depending on what cell you have selected. So change it to this worksheet. Here you will see the rule. The rule looks good, but instead of applying it to B3, we want to apply it to A3 to A20, A3 to A20. So we'll select that. Now we'll hit apply. And now, as you can see, the conditional formatting has been applied to all of these cells. One other little nuance here is that the value here that we reference, the cell we reference A3, that's that relative reference, needs to be the same reference as the first cell in the applies to range. So that could be another thing that can throw this off. Is this If this says A3, but this says A4 or something like that, it's going to be out of sync and not apply down. Because what happens in the background is a conditional formatting manager actually goes and applies this rule to every single cell here in the applies to reference. It's going to change this because this is a relative reference. It'll change this to A4. It only does that in the background. We don't see it here. We just see a reference to A3, which can be a little confusing, but it will actually apply that to every cell that we have referenced here in this applies to range. So it's just good to know those two need to match. Now that we have it all set up, we can go ahead and click OK and our conditional formatting rule has been applied. And again, you do not need the formula here. I can go ahead and delete it. This formula doesn't matter. It's not impacting our rule. We just wrote the formula in a cell to create the rule or create the formula for the rule, and then we can delete it. So now let's take a look at how to apply the conditional formatting to entire rows. On this entire row sheet here, we have the same setup with the same conditional formatting rule applied to column A. Now, in order to expand that out, it's actually really easy to do. Again, we'll go to the Home tab here, Conditional Formatting, go to Manage Rules, and then you might want to change this to this worksheet, again, depending on what you have selected. Here we will see our rule, and again, this is the exact same rule we just wrote. In our Applies To window, we can just change this to include uh, all the, the range all the way out to column D, or however many columns we have. We'll just change that there, select all of those cells, and now this applies to A3 to D20, hit apply. And as you can see, the conditional formatting is applied across the entire row. And this works because we have the reference to A3. The column letter here is an absolute reference, meaning it will not change as the formula is applied and evaluated across all of the cells. So again, like I just said, the conditional formatting manager is going to apply this rule and evaluate it in all of the cells within this range here, A3 to D20. So it does this for uh, B3, but since we have a dollar symbol in front of column A here, that's an absolute reference, and it's going to evaluate A3, the value in A3 instead in this formula, and still apply it to B3. Since the row number is relative, as it goes down, copies it down to B4 and C4 and all these different cells, still going to evaluate the, the value in column A. And then if that returns a true, it'll apply it to those cells. So it's really easy to do. 
as long as we have all the absolute and relative references set up correctly. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the maintenance on this. It's relatively easy to maintain and update and add to these conditions. So in our rule list over here, let's say we no longer want to apply the rule here. We can just delete the value in this cell. As you can see, the conditional formatting is automatically applied there. Uh, and it does not apply to that value that's no longer there. I'll hit Control Z to undo that. Same thing if we were to change the value here, maybe it should be 2119 instead. Hit Enter, we're no longer uh, getting that value there formatted. What if we want to add to this list? We can do that as well. Let's just take uh, the first five characters out of this value right here. I'll hit Control C to copy those. I'll paste those right here. Now we don't see it being applied automatically yet. We need to go update our rule. So we'll go conditional formatting, manage rules. This is where we can choose this worksheet to see all the rules in this worksheet. And here in our rule, we can go edit rule. We'll see our formula here. Now it's only going down to G5, but as you can see here, this value is now in G6. So let's just change this to G6. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit OK, apply. And now, as you can see, we have the rule applied all the way down to G6 and that cell there is being highlighted. Another option there is you could just insert rows or cells above the last cell in that reference there, and that would automatically expand out the range in our conditional formatting rule. So that's an example of how to apply conditional formatting to partial matches on a list of values. I hope you found this helpful. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions on how to apply this to different scenarios, please leave a comment right below this video. Thanks again for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.